We? We're very cute. Running to speed, stand it's, by. It's, it's, in, it's interesting having mothers come up to me and say, we loved your show, Mark, but the best bit was that our children would watch it. It's interesting, isn't it? There's no swearing. Ah, oh, yes, that's a very good point. What did the kids say to you out there? Oh, they just... They asked me if I wouldn't help sketch <laughs> I said, I could just sack them. Excellent, that was very funny. Okay. Um, so, start off with, why were you happy to get involved um, with... Let's put that door again. <clears throat> okay, I've got the question. Okay, um, to get involved with World Hypertension Day. Really? While I was filming Hell's Kitchen, approximately a month ago, I made a little statement where I said that our palates are born out of our childhood. And when I, I'll clarify that, because when I was a boy, we had salad cream, we had HP sauce, things I still love today. And if I think about the young children of today, they eat too many crisps, they eat too many salted peanuts, they eat too many crit chips with salt on So what are we doing? We're breeding them to love salt. Salt is a major problem. It's, for example, when I was a young chef in my 20s and then 30s, I suffered from very high blood pressure because of my salt intake. I didn't realize that at the time. I blamed it on stress. By removing salt or a large percentage of salt from my diet, bringing my blood pressure right down. So it goes to show that, you know, it's awareness is very important. And do people often, I mean... Can we reduce the movement around to get reflections of the mirror over there possible? Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. Stop it's just the guys in white, obviously, standing out more. Emma. Way. Emma, can you tell the kitchen to stay in the kitchen? And make no noise. Thank you. Thank Camera's you. still loading. Okay, just wait for me to go. Oh. So, um... Basically, you're kind of recommending that people switch to a lower salt diet. Do you think that they'll struggle with that? Let's not forget, the body needs salt. But I think what's important is the awareness of salt that we take. I think we should almost stop and just question how much salt we actually use within our cooking. I think just by cutting percentage, a large percentage of salt out of our cooking, it should make no difference. This morning I cooked tuna without any salt, which was delicious. And because of the way I cooked it, because of what I garnished it with, the way you eat it, is you don't even miss the salt. Do you think people have a habit of putting in salt when it's completely unnecessary anyway? I think it's habit. I think people just season and season. They think they it's like when you go down the chip shop, out comes the sarsen's vinegar. Lots of Saxon salt. The more the better. That's the logic. It's part of the ritual of eating fish and chips. How many people sit down for dinner and before they've tasted their food, salt and pepper? Lots of them. So seasoning is part of a ritual of eating. I mean, you know, I went through a stage in my life where I used to butter bread. It's been a little bit of salt in it, and I like the texture, I like the explosion in my mouth. Because let's not forget in the world of gastronomy, we have little tricks little sprinkling of salt crystal, a little splash of lemon juice, a little dash of vinegar. What does it do? It gets the juices in the mouth running and then it exaggerates the flavour. So you're not basically saying all oh, salt is bad, it's just basically people need to be aware of how much they automatically have when it's unnecessary? Well let's not forget, a lot of food has a natural amount of salt content within it. So, you know, it's very easy to over-season and not realising you're over-seasoning. Because when you've been brought up on, you know, as a child, you've eaten lots of crisps, you've eaten lots of salted peanuts. We're used to salt. We can take lots of salt. But actually, if you think about it, you don't need that much. How many people season their chicken, their pork, before they cook it? And what do they do? They get a salt crust. It's impossible that that salt can penetrate the centre of the meat. So the logic is you should season at the end when you've carved it, just a little sprinkling inside. And what other things do you recommend? I, I read that you um, were cooking a couple of meals, like you said earlier, with the tuna, where you're using different kinds of herbs and, and spices. So what, what kind of things would you <coughs> recommend? I think whether you're cooking meat or fish, it's about what you serve with it. Use spices, use herbs, Use olives, capers, you know, 
those Provencal flavours, those flavours from the south of Italy, they're delicious. Yeah. And when you think, we're all becoming more and more Mediterranean influenced because it, it, it seems to be healthy, which it is. Just cut out on the salt. Okay. Um, have you got, I wanted to ask if you had some kind of meal that you could give kind of specific examples on, because I'm guessing we're going to get footage of you cooking tuna. Yes. This morning. Yes. So kind of talk me through the, the logic of what you did with that. How many times have we all sat in a restaurant and we've ordered, for example, lamb provencal and we eat our lamb and we're halfway through it. There's no garnish left. The tuna I cooked this morning, which was in that Sicilian style, every mouthful had lots of garnish. That's what's important is lots of garnish, lots of flavour. Because if you're going to take salt out of a dish, you have to replace it with something. Okay, so people need to be aware of that. Okay. Um, obviously being a spokesperson for this Global Hypertension, World Hypertension Day, um, which is a global thing, um, is it important that you only kind of lend your name and your support to something that you feel important about? Because obviously you mentioned your own kind of blood pressure. When you've suffered from high blood pressure, which I have, um, for many years, is, is I think you have a duty to share your story, to share your knowledge. Whether people take on board what you're sharing with them is their choice. But the first thing I would recommend anybody who's a parent is to stop giving their children crisps, peanuts. They're very damaging. And do you find that kids listen to you as well? Because obviously we saw you kind of talking to the kids earlier. Do you, do you see that they pay attention to you as much as the adults? Well, I think if one of those children out there asked me a question, because I did tell them on Sunday it's um, World Hypertension Day, I think you, you really have to deliver your message to the parents, to the children. And I think if children see a so-called celeb telling them too many crisps, too much salty peanuts, too much salt on your food is bad. I think they would listen. It's amazing the response a celebrity can have on children. I think by sharing your knowledge, your story with the parents should make them question whether we're going to give our children a bag of crisps, a bag of peanuts. Actually, why not give them a banana, an apple? Far more delicious. And do you consider yourself a celebrity? No, you're crazy. I'm a cook, aren't I? But obviously you're on television and but people know who you are. I'm a cook who's on telly, that's it. I'm not seen in public, as you know. It was quite funny because I read an article earlier about um, John Christophe Novelli who said after he did Hell's Kitchen he found it quite intimidating to go out and about just because he did get mobbed, but you seemed quite happy with it. <laughs> I'm safe here, aren't I? It's just outside my restaurant, it's Chelsea. But I'm never seen on the streets of London. I'm never seen in public. I don't go to gatherings, you know, is I don't see the point of it. I much prefer to be at home with my children and be, be with my friends. So what you mean is even though people recognise you, know who you are, you're, you're not a celebrity, you're not going out doing a no. kind of circuit lifestyle no. thing? I wouldn't, I, I'm not one of those individuals who turn up to the opening of a crisp packet, since crisps are the topic of the conversation. So I'd say very appropriate. I think Gary Lineker has got a lot to answer for himself. Don't you? Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Celebrities endorsing kind Depends of. Depends what you're endorsing. Yeah. A lot of salt in walkers. Yeah. Um, there aren't that many, too many celebs that endorse, endorse junk food, though, these days, are they? Do you think they're a bit more careful about setting a bad example, do you think? No, I don't think they take that into consideration. Really? I just don't think they've been asked. Okay. Um, how do you. Relax, you mentioned kind of hanging out with your kids. When you're not. My children, it's like this weekend I'm going to deer stalking with my son for the weekend. He flies back in from Spain on Saturday morning and we go off to the countryside for two days. And what do you like about that? It's escapism. It's as simple as that. It's relaxation, isn't it? It's healthy. But you, you're quite into fishing as well, so it's kind fishing. of hunting and gathering type thing. I like the hunter gatherer. Anything that's romantic. Um, and. Are you quite good? Do you, you know, are you skilled with it? <laughs> yeah, for me, if I'm honest, it's just about going out there and being with nature. It's a simple thing. 
Do you ever get ideas when you're out and about? Of course, Mother Nature is a true artist. She really is. What kind of what kind of things have inspired you when you have them? Well, if you if you if, if you just look at Mother Nature, it's it's you know, in in late September you will see pigeons eating elderberries. We know that roast pigeon with elderberries is delicious. You know, to steam sea bass on seaweed is a natural. Yeah. To roast a partridge with wild mushrooms is a natural. We just allow Mother Nature to dictate to catch a wild salmon. And on the side of the riverbank you'll see wild sorghum and you'll see watercress beds. It's all Mother Nature. She's a great creator. And do you often go to other people's restaurants? No, I've never seen other people's restaurants. Why would that be? Just Why would I want to endorse their product? If I'm sitting in their restaurant, aren't they all going to ask, well, if he's here, who's there? It's not very clever. But you can't pick up ideas and suss out the kind of what other people are doing? I'm an interest in what I do. Um, when you travel abroad, what kind of food do you kind of look forward to tasting and experiencing? I, I, when I go, I spend a lot of time in the Caribbean, in Jamaica. I like street food. I do like street food. I like when I was in Barbados the other week. I found myself going down the street and eating the hottest curry I've ever eaten in my life. Delicious. Would I have known whether there was salt in it? No. There's a lot of spice. Excellent. Very good point. Um, and um, have you got a favourite meal? Have, like, have you got one meal that you really like and always kind of... I'm very simple. I like girls' eggs with mayonnaise. I like roast chicken. Done well. I like fresh crab. I like wild smoked salmon. I just like very beautiful quality ingredients. Very simple. Would you say that they're kind of comfort food? Eggs, chicken, and there's, there's something comforting about those, all those dishes. Do you think? <coughs> um, for me, I just like sitting down and eating. I like simplicity. I don't like complicated food. I like just very good quality ingredients, served very simply. Just sit down and eat and have a glass of wine. I like the fact that you mentioned HP and salad cream. So I was obviously brought up on that as well. I still have some cream and everything. It's really Delicious. quite bad. <laughs> it's quite bad. Um, and finally, have you kind of got any um, ambitions left of what you'd like to do? You must understand one thing, that I realised my dream as a very young man. And I accept that I will never achieve anything greater than I did when I was a young man. But I believe that today my position is that I'm an ambassador in my industry. And all I do is share my story in the world that I came from, which was an old world of gastronomy. That's what I do, and try to inspire people. So Share my knowledge to try and enrich others' lives. I quite like the fact that you've um, obviously achieved so much, and, and now you seem to prioritise your family as well above all things. Is, is that right? It's the most important. And does that help you in any way as well, like with your kind of career, having a kind of, that kind of stable base and support? And there's nothing more tiring than chasing an ambition that you may never achieve. As I've always said, a man's grasp should be greater than his reach. Okay, we'll work that out. Okay. okay. And he dropped? Yeah. <laughs> I was getting the grasp and the thing around the wrong way. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's lovely to talk to you. You take care. I'm back above you. Oh. <laughs> I did miss it actually. When you said it, I almost hit it. <laughs>